Hi, welcome to Faith and Bible ASMR. I'm so glad you're here today. I'm sorry I'm putting this up a little bit late today. I felt like there were a few important things that I needed to address in this because it's such an important passage that I wanted to add a little bit more this morning. So we're going to be looking at Acts 7 today and it's the stoning of Stephen which is a very somber passage, but he was such an inspiring man that I hope you will listen to this video. I wanted to, us to look at a few facts because I just want us to know a little bit of what was going on. So just to give you a little bit of a picture, he was addressing the Sanhedrin council because he was arrested and so he was defending himself, but it wasn't much of a defense because really he didn't try to appease them or anything. He came on the offensive and was very truthful with them. So. In my life application Bible, it says that when Stephen was brought before the council of religious leaders, the accusation against him was the same that the religious leaders had used against Jesus. The group falsely accused Stephen of wanting to change Moses' customs because they knew that the Sadducees who controlled the council believed only in Moses' laws. So in verse 2, Stephen launched into a long speech about Israel's relationship with God and from the Old Testament history he showed that the Jews had constantly rejected God's message and his prophets and that his this council that he was addressing had rejected the Messiah God's son he made three points he went through Israel's history and how God acted in the world he went through people worshiping God long before there was a temple because God does not live in a temple. And he went through Jesus' death and how it was just one more example of Israel's rebellion against and the rejection of God. And they say here, you know, Stephen didn't really defend himself. Instead, he took the offense of seizing the opportunity to summarize his teaching about Jesus. Stephen was accusing these religious leaders of failing to obey God's laws, the laws that they prided themselves in following so meticulously. That was the same accusation that Jesus had made against them. When we witness for Christ, we don't need to be on the defensive. Instead, we can simply share our faith. So they mentioned that Stephen's review of Jewish history gives a clear testimony of God's faithfulness and his sovereignty, which means that he's in complete control. Despite the continued failures of this chosen people and, his, and the swirling world events, God was working out his plan. When faced by a confusing array of circumstances, remember that God's in control and nothing surprises him. That this world is not all there is. It will pass away, but God is eternal. And that God is just and he will make things right, punishing the wicked and rewarding the faithful. God wants to use you like Joseph, Moses, and Stephen to make a difference in the world. And he does. He wants to use all of us. That is why we're here to glorify him. So I just want to mention one more thing that they mentioned here. And it is that Stephen saw the glory of God and Jesus, the Messiah, standing at God's right hand at the end of the chapter. His words are similar to Jesus' words spoken before the high council. And Stephen's vision supported Jesus' claim and angered the Jewish leaders who had condemned Jesus to death for blasphemy. They could not tolerate Stephen's words, so they dragged him out and killed him. 
people may not kill us for witnessing about Christ, but they may they may let us know they don't want to hear the truth and try to silence us. Keep honoring God in your conduct and words. Though many may turn against you and your message, some will follow Christ. Remember that Stephen's death had a profound impact on Paul, who later became the world's greatest missionary. Even those who oppose you now may later turn to Christ. And Paul also wrote most of the New Testament for us. As Stephen died, he spoke words very similar to Jesus' words on the cross. For telling others the good news of Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, the members of the early church were persecuted. Sometimes, as in the case of Stephen, they were even put to death. Christ had promised his followers that living for him would lead to trouble. This is still true. If we boldly live out our faith, the light of our lives will expose the sinfulness of others. Our words of truth will pierce their souls. Some will be convicted and yield to the leading of the Spirit. Others will become angry and hardened in their hatred of the truth. But as Jesus said, they will do all this to you because of me, for they rejected the one who sent me, his Father. We shouldn't be surprised or abandon our faith when we are persecuted. And you know, the application points that I just read to you, I just love about the Life Application Bible. Plus it gives just so many details and maps and and just history of things that it is a Bible well worth investing in. If you're interested in that, it's in my description box below. Just click the little arrow below the video and, and you'll see the link. So let's dive into Acts chapter 7. If you love learning more about God and His Word, as I do, then I'm glad that you're here and I hope that you'll subscribe and join us. We have a peaceful atmosphere here and it's just a safe place for you to grow your relationship with God and be nurtured in that. And it says, and the high priest said, are these things so? And Stephen said, brothers and fathers, hear me. The God of glory appeared to our father Abraham when he was in Mesopotamia, before he lived in Haran, and said to him, Go out from your land and from your kindred, and go into the land that I will show you. Then he went out from the land of the Chaldeans and lived in Haran. And after his father died, God removed him from there into this land in which you are now living. Yet he gave him no inheritance in it, not even a foot's length, but promised to give it to him as a possession and to his offspring after him, though he had no child. And God spoke to this effect that his offspring would be sojourners in a land belonging to others who would enslave them and afflict them 400 years. But I will judge the nation that they serve, said God, and after that they shall come out and worship me in this place. And he gave them the covenant of circumcision. And so Abraham became the father of Isaac and circumcised him on the eighth day. And Isaac became the father of Jacob and Jacob of the twelve patriarchs. And the patriarchs, jealous of Joseph, sold him into Egypt. But God was with him and rescued him out of all his afflictions and gave him favor and wisdom before Pharaoh, king of Egypt, who made him ruler over Egypt and over all his household. Now there came a famine throughout all Egypt and Canaan and great affliction, and our fathers could find no food. 
But when Jacob heard that there was grain in Egypt, he sent out our fathers on their first visit, and on the second visit, Joseph made himself known to his brothers, and Joseph's family became known to Pharaoh. And Joseph sent and summoned Jacob his father and all his kindred, seventy-five persons in all. And Jacob went down into Egypt, and he died he and our fathers, and they were carried back to Shechem and laid in the tomb that Abraham had bought for a sum of silver from the sons of Hamor in Shechem. But as the time of the promise drew near which God had granted to Abraham, people increased and multiplied in Egypt until there arose over Egypt another king who did not know Joseph. He dealt shrewdly with our race and forced our fathers to expose their infants so that they would not be kept alive. At that time Moses was born and he was beautiful in God's sight, and he was brought up for three months in his father's house. And when he was exposed, Pharaoh's daughter adopted him and brought him up as her own son. And Moses was instructed in all the wisdom of the Egyptians, and he was mighty in his word and deeds. When he was forty years old, it came into his heart to visit his brothers, the children of Israel. And seeing one of them being wronged, he defended the oppressed man and avenged him by striking down the Egyptian. He supposed that his brothers would understand that God was giving them salvation by his hand, but they did not understand. And on the following day, he appeared to them as they were quarreling and tried to reconcile them, saying, Men, you are brothers. Why do you wrong each other? But the man who is wrongdoing, but the man who is wronging his neighbor thrust him aside, saying, Who made you a ruler and a judge over us? Do you want to kill me as you killed the Egyptian yesterday? At this retort, Moses fled and became an exile in the land of Midian, where he became the father of two sons. Now when forty years had passed, an angel appeared to him in the wilderness of Mount Sinai in a flame of fire in a bush. When Moses saw it, he was amazed at the sight and he drew near to look. There came the voice of the Lord, I am the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob. And Moses trembled and did not dare to look. Then the Lord said to him, Take off your sandals from your feet, for the place where you are standing is holy ground. I have surely seen the affliction of my people who are in Egypt and have heard their groaning, and I have come down to deliver them. And now come, I will send you to Egypt. This Moses, whom they rejected, saying, Who made you a ruler and a judge? This man God sent as both ruler and redeemer by the hand of the angel who appeared to him in the bush. This man led them, performing wonders and signs in Egypt and at the Red Sea and in the wilderness for forty years. This is the Moses who said to the Israelites, God will raise up for you a prophet like me from your brothers. This is the one who was in the congregation in the wilderness with the angel who spoke to him at Mount Sinai and with our fathers. He received living oracles to give to us. Our fathers refused to obey him but thrust him aside and in their hearts they turned to Egypt saying to Aaron, Make for us gods who will go before us. And as for this Moses who led us out from the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. 
And they made a calf in those days and offered a sacrifice to the idol and were rejoicing in the work of their hands. But God turned away and gave them over to worship the host of heaven as is written in the book of the prophets. Did you bring to me slain beasts and sacrifices during the forty years in the wilderness, O house of Israel? You took up the tent of Moloch and the star of your god, Rephan, the images that you made to worship, and I will send you into exile beyond Babylon. Our fathers had the tent of witness in the wilderness just as he who spoke to Moses directed him to make it, according to the pattern that he had seen. Our fathers in turn brought it in with Joshua when they dispossessed the nation that God drove out before our fathers. So it was until the days of David, who found favor in the sight of God and asked to find a dwelling place for the God of Jacob, but it was Solomon who built a house for him. Yet the Most High does not dwell in houses made by hands, as the prophet says, Heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. What kind of house will you build for me, says the Lord? Or what is the place of my rest? Did not my hand make all these things? You stiff-necked people, uncircumcised in heart and ears, you always resist the Holy Spirit. As your fathers did, so do you. Which of the prophets did your fathers not persecute? And they killed those who announced beforehand the coming of the righteous one, whom you have now betrayed and murdered. You who received the law as delivered by angels and did not keep it. Now when they heard these things, they were enraged and they ground their teeth at him. But he, full of the Holy Spirit, gazed into heaven and saw the glory of the Lord and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. And he said, Behold, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. And they crowd at, cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and rushed together at him. Then they cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their garments at the feet of a young man named Saul, who later became Paul. And as they were stoning Stephen, he called out, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And falling to his knees, he cried out with a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. And the Bible study that I'm going to do on Monday on this passage she talks about why it says he fell asleep. So make sure you catch that. I'm going to pray for us, dear Father. Thank you that you love us. Thank you for this example of Stephen and how he was so much like Jesus. Thank you, Father, for that. Thank you, Jesus, for your example. We love you. We appreciate what you've done for us. In Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen. Bye, you guys. Have a great weekend.